Hi, welcome back. And today we are going to focus on rugs. Rugs are not cheap. They're not inexpensive. So I used to really panic on what I was going to get because I knew I was stuck with it. Once I got it, I was stuck with it for quite some time. A rug is a foundation of a room and it really can change the entire feel of a room or can completely go against what you're trying to accomplish if you're not careful. But today I'm going to try to show you some tips and give you a little background on each kind and some different styles so you'll know what to look for and what kind of rug that you want to buy for your house. Okay, now here's the types of rugs. They're synthetic, which obviously is synthetic. That's what the mass produced are. They're cheaper in quality and cheaper in cost. The downside is you are going to have to replace them far sooner than you would one of higher quality. The bright side of that is if you have small children who like to paint on things or spill beet juice or dogs who chew up things, that's a really good buy to get through those times when you just want your house to look good. You know, I used to tell my family I could never have nice things because they always destroyed it. <laughs> you know, you know how kids are. It's hard. It's hard to keep a nice house. And now I have dogs who tear up everything. So, you know, that is an option. The next type is a jute rug or jute or Cecil. Either, I think it's either called Cecil or Cecil. I think it's called Cecil. Both of those are a natural fiber. A sisal rug is not as soft as a jute rug. Jute is made from jute. <laughs> a sisal rug is made from agave fibers. It's far more durable than the jute, but it's kind of hard, like hard. So, if, in it, but it's easier to clean. Like you can wash it down. Um, I prefer a jute rug. But I will say, with my animals, our jute rugs, for some reason they're attracted to them and they love to chew on them and pull them out. And uh, that's been difficult. Like I have two of my jute rugs actually sitting over here on the side that are supposed to go into the dining room and the kitchen, but I can't put them down because my dog right now. So that is something, something to think about if you have dogs. <laughs> Well, and maybe, maybe not. Maybe your dog's older and doesn't care, doesn't chew on anything, but I have a nine-month-old puppy who's a terror. Next thing we have wool and wool blend. I love wool rugs because they're basically indestructible. They're typically pretty expensive. The reason why is because they will last sometimes generations. All you have to do is take care of them. Um, they're worth getting if you can get it. And then of course we have animal hide and of course hide is, is very durable, but I don't know what it, what it's like to have animals with a hide rug. I don't know if they would enjoy that or not. I don't know. Okay. The next we have piles. Pile is the thickness of the rug. There's a low pile, medium pile, high pile, um, multi-level and shag. Low is obviously very low. Like um, now, with a lot of the synthetic rugs, it's literally a print that they put on almost like a foam. It's a print and that, that would be, but it's basically a texture or a, a fabric. The thing with low piles is they are easier to clean and they're usually more cost effective. And then we have the medium ones, which is, you know, just barely raised raise just a little bit and you know those as they get higher the durability pretty much stays the same but the difficulty in cleaning goes up <laughs> as the pile goes up so um keep that in mind a multi-level ply which i really like and they used to be popular when i was young but it's like say you have a motif of um, a background with flowers and the flowers are raised up off of it just a little higher than the bottom and you know it had that almost 3d feel and i think that's going to come back so keep an eye on that definitely with really high traffic areas you don't want to use a hype or a shag um, because they tend to get smushed and look dingier a lot quicker i mean you put it in a bedroom or in even a living room, a setting area in a living room, but I wouldn't put it in a hallway or an entry or anything that is getting constant walking on with, with shoes or anything like that. So now we're gonna move on to examples of different types. First one we're gonna start looking at are geometrics. This one is really cool. I love that it uh, gives a lot of character and it's minimal in the inner part, but the border is what has all the details. That helps a lot. 
Then we have this striped and it's like a uh, layered striped. And this was so popular a couple years ago, but I think it has a little bit of classicness to it that it, the tr it's not really trendy and you can always use this kind of rug. And this is a flat lay, I believe. And flat lays uh, work really well just about everywhere, but make sure you put a rug pad under it or you will slide all over the place all the time. So that is definitely needed. And this is another example of a geometric rug. And as you can tell, everything in the room is very muted and all the focus, your eyes immediately go down to the floor. And that is, in this case, that is obviously what they wanted. And it becomes an art piece when you do that. And so think of that. It's how much attention do you want on your rug? Do you want it to you be more for functional or do you want do you want it to shine <laughs> this is this whole room is fantastic honestly this rug is so cool it looks to be a jute rug with a dyed detail around the corner and so it kind of fits in the jute and geometric at the same time but wow i mean it is very soft and not in your face but it gives so much character to this room i absolutely love it and I will probably find a place for this rug in my house somewhere. So we'll see about that, but I love this entire room. Okay, so next we're going to move on to florals. Okay, this first example, you can see that this room is very muted all around, just like the, the other one with the geometric and the big pop of blue is on the ground. So that rug stands out. And I don't know if you can see how big that rug is. That is very important, especially if you if that is what you're wanting to stand out. It is very important to get a big size. Get as large as a size as you can afford and that will fit in the room. Small rugs make a room look very unfinished and um, awkward a little bit. <laughs> So just make sure you're getting a large rug. Oh, and this geometric one. Wow, guys, it's muted in itself, but it blends so well with the theme in the room. I absolutely love this rug, but see how much bigger. Um, and that's another problem a lot of people do. If you put a rug underneath your dining room table, make sure it's big enough that when you scoot your chairs back, you're still on the rug. Um, that is a, a big issue that, you know, it, it will make it look dinky and it doesn't flow right. Okay, on this room, as you can tell, it looks to be honestly a, a not very large living room, but you can tell that that rug takes up almost the entire living room. And it is a Persian rug. All the legs, at least, at least the front legs of all the furniture should be on the rug in your living space. That it, that's how big your rug needs to be. And here's another example of a rug that the couch on the right looks like it's probably just the front legs on the rug, but this chair here is completely on the rug and the rug fits the entire room. You can see it almost goes up to the fireplace and that's really what you want. You want it to cover the area. So have you found a rug that you absolutely love but you can't afford the biggest price or they're out of the biggest price and uh, you still want to make it work really bad? Well, here's a tip. Buy a jute or sisal rug to go under it and layer it like this. Let me show you some examples and it works really well. And it works because the jute rug is underneath the furniture like it's supposed to be, but the um, main rug is, is still on there and it gives it a lot of personality and texture. And here, you know, the jute covers the room, but the really cool pop of color is at the foot of the bed so you're not wasting a ton of this expensive decorative rug underneath the bed where it's not seen so you could do this which i love this idea and it also grounds all the pattern on it it balances it out with the rug with the the jute on the bottom softens it a little bit and then here's another example in c the neither one of these rugs are actually very big but the front legs of these two chairs are on the rugs and also the couch, but the layered look helps a lot because you it looks like a pretty nice rug on top and then a jute rug underneath. Gives dimension, gives texture, gives it a lot of style, and it'll probably save you money. <laughs> so if that's what you want, do it, it works. Here's another example, and I love this. It's basically tone on tone, 
but is the same principles as all the other ones. You can just layer. If you're just wanting the jute rug by itself, here's an example. It has a red border, which is really cute, but you can, you don't have to do that at all. You could just have any, and I love that room. I love the pop of color, the orange on the chair and the yellow on the, on the uh, lampshades. Imagine that rug is a pattern rug. See how it would completely transform the room. It would be a completely different room. Their focus is to keep it soft, little pops of color, little accents of color. But if you wanted to be full blown hay in your face, you could have a bright rug or a floral or a geometric that would completely change the feel of the room. Here's another one that's, these I believe come in, I believe these are a sisal rug and they come in squares and you basically put them together and you can fit, you make your own size however you want. And I absolutely love anything that is the hourglass shape. I love, I would do this in my house if, I probably will do this in my house in the future, but I absolutely love this. It's very durable. See the front legs of the couch? They're on it. Next, we're gonna go to animals, <laughs> animal print. You can be very figurative or literal with this. Like in this one, this is actually really cute and I love this. This printed, I believe that's a cheetah, a printed cheetah on the rug. <laughs> I, I love this. I can see this in like a boudoir, a closet, or you know, I, just somewhere really cool that you're going to have fun with. That is a great place too. And then look at this one. I believe this is deer. I'm not sure if this is gazelle or deer. <laughs> I'm not for sure, but I love this. I love the subtleness of it. It's in the way they chose to do a really deep floral all around on the curtains and the headboard and then you just have that pop at the bottom that kind of brings brings a shine and bring, you look up at the ceiling because of it and I love that. A rug like this, which is, I, do, I don't know what type of animal it is, I can just tell it is an animal, probably a cow, but I really like this underneath a round table. I think it's very classic, very, gives it a little uh, masculine feel to a room and um, a lot of character and I really like it. And I don't think you have to have real for it to look good. You could get, I don't know where to get fake animal skin, but imagine you can. And I love this idea. I love of making your dressing area, your walk-in closet, a really just fun escape. Have fun when you're getting dressed. And it's a place where you can let a lot of your personality out and do things that nobody's gonna see so you can get a little crazy with it put a zebra print on the floor or, you know have an exaggerated chandelier because it's for you it's to make you feel good while you're getting ready so why not this one this is not this is more geometric but it looks like an animal print from afar and i think this was their goal to kind of make it look like that it's the only thing with a lot of pattern in the room so it really works it makes it look really good so that's an option and that's it as far as the animal prints. It's just find what you like and um, go with it. If you want to try it, go with it. We're going to move on to runners <laughs> on this one. It is a geometric shape going up on a two-toned, you know, it's a blue and then it's a darker blue on top of it. it gives it a lot of personality. That's going to stand out. That is gonna that is huge gonna stand out and you would think as bright and crazy as that blue is which i love that with the gold ball on the top i love that um that that would be the point that stands out but no because they topped that with something even more bold that's what stands out and and then the blue of the stairwell almost becomes um, a settling point <laughs> so very clever i love i love how they did that and this runner i love this this is an entryway Entryway is a great place to have a runner because honestly, that's where people walk in and track in whatever's outside. And I would suggest don't put your most expensive rug unless you got money to that, you know, I don't have to spend. Don't put your most expensive rug uh, in your entryway. But I love this, like the, if you can see that everything in the room is really calm and then you have the really rich rug that it's not, too patterned but it's not too crazy it's really a lot of desaturated rich color and it just works really well my advice too 
if you have an area that people come in and out of all the time. You can even use an indoor outdoor rug and they make them pretty good now, but they're so much easier to clean. And um, I live out in, I live out in the forest. <laughs> I live where when it rains, our whole area is just a mud pit. So it's well worth it for us to have rugs that we can clean and clean often. So keep that in mind too. And this rug, I love obviously the, the bright color and the pattern. This gives it more of a traditional feel. And this runner, there's a couple things. Ignore the walls. Look at the black paint on the stairs. That is really anything that you're gonna put on that black paint is gonna stand out. And this is a jute geometric. It has stripes and it gives it a lot of personality. The stripes obviously elongate the stairs. It brings your eye up. And then this one, if you watched the last video on the curtains, you will see why I absolutely love this one. I just love the jute rug on the left-hand side that you, it's almost invisible because it it's down there for a purpose and not to be seen. It just gives texture and layering into the room and not a lot, of, your eye is not supposed to go to it. And then you have these wonderful curtains covering the hallway and this long, beautiful vintage rug and it looks like a wool rug that goes down this hallway to the front door. And it, that is gorgeous, guys. If you have an entry like that, put a rug and then maybe a curtain, put a curtain at the end of it. Oh gosh, it's so pretty, I love it. On this stairway runner, I mean, wow. You have a very big, bright, beautiful rug down here on the bottom with the cute little puppy, but your eye still goes to that very saturated blue plain runner. And because of the brightness of it, and there, there's no pattern on it, but your eyes still go to it because it's just a wow moment. It's a very beautiful color. And then in that, because that is saturated and it is plain, your eye goes up and it's intended to keep going up into the art on the hallway, which I believe is a tapestry and I love that too. But this entire room, it's not my style. I can appreciate everything that was done in this room. It, it was all done with purpose. And here are ideas of how like in a closet or something, you can layer smaller ones. My advice when you have an area where you have two different areas with rugs in it, be very careful. Don't try to match them like have the same rug. Don't do two of the same rug in, in a room, no matter if it's two different sizes, just just don't do it. It looks very staged as in off of a JCPenney catalog or, you know, I don't even know if they do catalogs anymore, but it's more of a showroom type thing than it actually looks good in a home and feels like a real home. But like this example, you have the geometric on one side and this vintage feel on the other. And I love those combinations with a Persian rug, a vintage rug, any type of floral, anything, jute, any plain rug is gonna look really good. It's gonna have contrast, but when you have two rugs that are geometric or two rugs that are vintage or floral or two rugs that are uh, jute, it's unless you are like seriously a pro at it, it's not probably not gonna look great and you're gonna waste your money because it's not gonna be what you're wanting to get out of it. So think about that when you, if there's rugs that are gonna be showing in the same area, think of how they complement each other and contrast each other. You don't want them to be matchy-matchy, but you don't want them to be so far out of the realm of each other that they don't fit. So think about that when you're picking your rugs. Key takeaways from today, try to decide what feel you want for your room. Is your rug, do you want your rug to stand out and you base the room off of your rug or do you want your rug to be a textured layer at the bottom that the rest of your room is already built and you're wanting to ground it. That is a great, rugs are great ways to do that. Great ways to warm, not keep warm <laughs> on the floor and uh, they have a lot of purposes and they really bring a coziness into a room and i suggest having a rug anywhere you can have a rug don't go crazy and look like you own a rug store there are there's a couple of my favorite places to get rugs i'm going to link below with different price points get the best quality rug you can but like i said before if you have animals who chew everything if you have children who drink and eat in the living room i wouldn't spend that money because i don't want to waste my money 
<laughs> if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and don't forget to watch the other videos in this series and keep coming back. I hope to see you soon. Y'all have a wonderful week.